do so. whatever you want to do. And if they judge you, they wasn't meant to be around you for that situation. So Welcome to another episode of the Ben Rollins Blueprint Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Rollins. I wonder. Today is going to be a great episode. We have a serial entrepreneur in the house. He's a um, veteran as well. And he also has his own clothing line called Wild Wolf Pad. So it's going to be an epic episode. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and welcome the one and only Mr. Kushan. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, bro? How did I, how did I do your name? <laughs> you, you did okay. It, it's it's Quayshon. Oh, Quayshon. Like, I, I don't went my whole life hearing yeah. worse pronunciation yeah, than Quishan. that. Yes, sir. Quayshon. <laughs> man, how you doing today, bro? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, man. First of all, thank you for your service. No problem at all. Thank and, you. And how was it like growing up, bro? Growing up was it was it was pretty hectic, but not too bad. Uh -huh. I grew up in PG County. Not sure if you're too familiar uh, with that. I live in PG County. We're at in PG County. In New Carrollton, High School. New Carrollton, okay. High yeah. I grew up around Palmer Park. Oh. Uh, Fanmar Heights as well. Moved to Hill Road, Balsam uh -huh. Tree. And then we moved to Anne Arundel County. Wow. Moved to Annapolis. Mm -hmm. Then we moved to Olderton. Wow. Hanover. Now I live in Severn. Oh. So I've been around. So, like, how was life like growing up in PG County? Were you um, um, a kid who always has like that? The high ambitions and stuff like that. So honestly, when I was growing up, my ambition wasn't too high. I was a product of my environment, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't always a positive kid. Uh -huh. let's, let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> and what is what was some of the um, stuff you 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 cut as a little kid that just stuck with you? Uh, some of the stuff that stuck with me, of course, the sports. Yeah. I was big in the sports. Didn't really play basketball back then. More so was football. Football mm -hmm. was my passion. I wanted to go to the NFL, but clearly that didn't go as planned. What happened? I kind of gave up on sports once we left PG County because uh. all my friends, the family that I grew up with, and we was all playing football together. Once we left and went to Anne Arundel County, uh -huh. I kind of just didn't want to play for no other teams if I wasn't with my cousins. Uh. So I kind of gave up on that. Wow. So, like, growing up, your your childhood dream was always to play, like, football. Yes. And when once that dream slid away, what was the next move? The next move, honestly, I just knew I wanted to do something that involved helping people. Mm. So, that's kind of when I changed my mind and wanted to just join the military. Yeah. And then as I got older, it kind of went from military to not military. Then when I hit high school, I just started talking to recruiters over time. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of going down a bad path, too. Yeah. So I felt like if I didn't join the military, I probably would end up in jail or something like that. <laughs> and I didn't want to do that. Because I grew up with a lot of people that's been in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. And I ain't want to end up like them. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people that I didn't want to end up like. I ain't really had too many role models. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up because some people, someone might be watching or listening to this podcast episode today and he might be saying, oh, maybe it's a kid growing up. He's like, man, I don't really have a role model. Yeah. I got a lot of um, influence. Exactly. I don't know what my friends want me to do. They want me to say crack on the side and have see, some no. dog. And like, they don't really know what the hell is going on. Yeah. So see, I was a product like, in my environment, but I didn't sell drugs and stuff, but I was going down the bad path. Mm -hmm. We don't really got to get into that, but yeah. I was going down the bad path and uh -huh. I didn't want to end up like that. Yeah. I lost a lot of family members to the street life and yeah. I didn't want to be on that road next. So I yeah. kind of stayed away from that and tried to make myself more positive. Yeah, I'm really glad you did that because sometimes we just, um, as kids, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into exactly. before you want to realize, bam, you hooked in. Like, damn, <laughs> bro. Like, yeah. how did I get myself in here? So you move, um, you, after high school, you just joined the military? So I joined, I was talking to recruiters my sophomore and junior year of high school. Yeah. And I actually enlisted my senior year, like the beginning of my senior year. So while I was in high school, my senior year, I was still getting paid from the military because I was showing up to drill. Oh. And then as soon as I graduated, I think two and a half or three months after, 
they shipped me out the basic training. Oh, so wow. from December of no, from August of no, I enlisted in December of 2013. Mm-hmm. Graduated 2014. Mm. Went to basic training. Did my nine years. Got out. Wow. So you, when you were in the military, did you have any goal? Or were you just like, oh, I just want to be here for a while and just get out of here? So when I first joined, yeah. I did plan on doing my 20 years. Uh-huh. But over time, the military was slowly changing. And to me personally, it was changing for the worse. Some people say it was for the better, but I think it was for the worse. What do you mean by that? Like, now the military is getting soft. Mm. Like, of course, when I got in in 2014, it wasn't as tough as it was back in the 80s and 70s where they can put their hands on you and stuff like that in basic training. But they were still able to yell at you and Uh discipline you in other ways besides putting their hands on you. Now... Mm. They can't yet the drill sergeants can't yell at you. Wow. Exactly. And that's 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 weird. Yeah. The military purpose is to break you down, build you back up, make you a soldier. Yeah. Not you go there just for money and benefits. What you just said now, that that's scary though, because if uh the um the navy or let's just say the US military or army or whatever you want to call it. If they're not really like trained physically, like exactly. it's gonna to be tough. So it's if, like if you go overseas and somebody yelling at you to do your job or go do this, you're gonna cry and break down because you're yeah. not used to. It. It's weird. Yeah, it's that's weird. scary. So I, when that stuff started to happen, I was like, yeah, it's my time to go ahead and get out. Mm. I don't want to be a part of this no more. Man, I mean you you're the alpha male. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did my nine years, and they're like, you gonna you gonna you, you gonna reenlist? No, no. Uh-uh. Wow, man. I'm not. I can't. Wow. And it's it's hard. It's so tough to see people like you who like really want um to be in the fundamentals, like the principles, yeah. the values of yeah, what the military Yeah, I, I actually had the complete intentions of doing my 20 years uh-huh. and probably even more depending on, because I still would have been young. I enlisted when I was 17. So wow. 20 years, I'd have been 37. Wow. Exactly. Dang. But it was... The change was not for me. <laughs> I can't even believe that it's a young person who was, who was saying that because, you know, sometimes yeah. it would be like an older person was saying, like, I need the old school, old school, old I school. I hung out with a lot of older people, so that kind of matured me faster than it should have, but it, it worked out for the better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Growing up, I was always the youngest person mm-hmm. in the crowd I hung with. Mm. Even when I was going down the bad road, I was the youngest, and even on the road I'm on now, I'm still one of the youngest. Mm. Like, so, yeah, good for Like, you. I have a lot of people... That I look at as mentors that's older than me, even yeah. if it is by two, three, four years, I learn a lot from them. Mm. So I keep them real close. So did that did that make you just decide to hang around people who are like better than you in one way or the other so you can improve yourself? Not necessarily prove myself. I just I like to learn from people. Yeah. So I feel like I don't want you around me if I can't learn from you or we can't learn from each other. Mm. Like it's some people that's my age, maybe younger, some even older, who feel like they know everything. Uh, I don't like being around people like that. Man, you just nailed some some big point right there because a lot of people, they claim they know everything, yeah, which I they don't, don't like really that. know thing, anything. Exactly. And that's a problem. And most of the times, people like that don't really have friends, and they wonder them. They wonder they're like, "Man, I thought you were my dog." Exactly. They're like, "Man, no, like, man." Like they can't take criticism. You yeah. can't tell them they're wrong about this. Or yeah. I got a lot of people I can learn from, and the people who I see that's younger than me, I try to get them to learn as well. Because I've been down, I done experienced a lot of stuff at mm-hmm. a young age, and mm-hmm. if I see somebody going down that same road, I try to talk to them about where that role going to end up leading them to. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they jump on another path and or create their own land or do something. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you're able to like do something like that because a lot of people need to hear someone's voice. Exactly. They want to hear. You know, sometimes people will just sit down and say, oh, this guy's not listening. <laughs> but the thing is, sometimes we don't even talk and, yeah. we, and we, don't, we don't let the communication flow. And yeah. we don't really understand what that person is sad at that moment. And there's That's something to have a communicate. There's something to communicate with someone. But how is the person feeling at the moment? Because sometimes the person might be going through a lot of stress and a lot of um, anxiety, and you just go and you want to deliver a message. This guy will be like, "Man, nah, I'm not really in a good mood." But he's not going to want to make you feel bad. Yeah. He's just going to make us <laughs> if he's listening, but he's not actually listening. Yeah, he's he just going in one ear out the other. Yeah, he's just going flow out, flow out. So I'm really glad that you were able to like be a mentor. To yeah, some other people. I, I try my best. Yeah. I try my best. 
that's and most people nowadays like they think they're doing a good thing by talking to people but it's not always about just talking to them it's about how you approach them yeah because what works for you how somebody approach you may not work for the next person yeah that's so true. you got to approach that situation from multiple different angles as mm. well yeah man and man. people don't think about that either that's true and that's why we're having this kind of we're having this <laughs> conversation so some people can listen and gain some valuable insight that's going to help them i hope so yeah they're, they're gonna they're gonna definitely help that, um, that's the goal to, that yeah. is the goal yeah they're gonna learn from it and share the episode too with your loved ones and friends share the episode with everybody <laughs> yeah man so i want to come back to you my man like i always i'm always fascinated when i hear about like the military or okay. the navy or anything because i want to really know and how was it like in the military what was some of the shock some of the things you were like damn i gotta go through that so see i wasn't active duty i was a reservist so i didn't uh -huh. experience a lot of stuff that a lot of the active duty people did but yeah. i have seen some stuff that was like or heard some stuff that was like really like when i was in basic training uh -huh. had some sergeants telling us stories about how when they was overseas and dealing with the kids running up to them with bomb uh -huh. vests on and all that Ooh. yeah i had a sergeant he was telling us a story, but you can hear it in his voice because his voice started to crackle a little bit. Uh -huh. And like you've seen the tears forming in his eyes. Yeah. He said he was standing post and a kid was walking up to him with a vest on and a teddy bear, like trying to give him a hug. Yeah. And he had to make a decision like, is your life or my life? And he had to do what he had to do. Yeah. But he was, he felt bad because he has a daughter that looked like around that same age that she was. Yeah. So he was just imagining, like, what if that was his daughter and somebody did that? Oh. But he was like, it was my life or hers, and wow. he had to do what he had to do. Yeah, man. So stories like that, I'm like, I don't want to see myself in a situation <laughs> like that because I don't know how I would handle that. Yeah, but when you real. join the military, you got to expect the unexpected because you yeah. don't know at any given moment you mm -hmm. can get that phone call saying, get ready, you're getting deployed tomorrow, Ooh. and you you out. Mm. So I don't really know the difference between like the active and the reserve. So, so I tell the, people, look at it like this. Yeah. Active duty is like a full-time job. You're uh -huh. doing it every day, even on the weekends. Uh -huh. You're away from your family a lot, stuff like that. And reserve is part-time. Yeah. You do it every so often. The money isn't coming in consistently. Like reserve is you go in to drill once a month, one weekend every month uh -huh. and two weeks out of the year for wow. your annual training. Whoa. But even though I was a reservist, I was on something called active duty orders a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was going to different states for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, just helping out with whatever they needed. So mm -hmm. I was doing that a lot. So that's how I got my active duty time. Mm. Wow. So I got a lot of active duty time. So I want to understand something. Let's just assume a war breakout today. Are they going to get all the reserves? Possibly they could. Oh. They, they could. Or well, it's like another thing called IRR, mm -hmm. where they can call everybody that's on that list to yeah. go first before they even get the active duty people went to. Ooh, really? Yeah, but I'm done. I don't got to worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> I did my time. I done served all I could. I did what I could do. I don't got to worry about any of that. So someone watching or listening to this podcast episode and like, oh, man, this military stuff, ah, I'm kind of intrigued. Like, what are some of the benefits? And what are some of the things that can pull me to join? So the benefits, of course, you know, you get the military discount from certain stores. Yeah. It is good at some stores. Some stores <laughs> only give you about 10%, so it ain't. But then you get housing allowance. Yeah. <laughs> you get the VA loan, schooling. It's, it's, it's actually a lot of perks to doing it. Yeah. I just couldn't deal with all the change that was going on. Uh -huh. That kind of made me very left. Mm. Like, my contract was coming to an end, and I was thinking about re-enlisting, but once I heard all the changes and stuff. So it's kind of like a contract. You sign a contract, and once the yeah. contract is... So the reserve is, they give you a six a six and two. You do six years, and then you have an option out of your last two years if you want to stay in and go to drill, uh -huh. or you can go in the IR, which is... You're not really drilling, but you still owe the military them too. So if something was to happen, like you said, a war breakout, yeah. you're on that list where they call you and you, you go first. No ifs, ands, or buts. Because wow. you owe the military them too. Mm. I already did my six and two. Mm. I re-enlisted and did an extra one. Yeah. And that was my nine years. Wow, man. That's that's pretty impressive. And yes. like I said earlier, and I want to say it again, thank you for your service. Thank you. So would you say that when you're in uniform, they respect you more than when you're just like a regular civilian? Yes, they do. Yeah. The, the respect 
comes flowing in. <laughs> like if I walked in the mall and I had on my uniform, everybody, I don't have people want to take pictures with me. Like I was a celebrity. <laughs> like people came up to me and my friend while we'd be on lunch and like, oh, can my son take a picture with you? And oh. I felt weird because it's like, I, I, I'm not famous or anything. So what are you going to do with this picture? <laughs> like it was just weird. Like we walking with our food in our hand, we looked at each other like, I, I don't want to take a picture. <laughs> But it's like, it seemed like we would be rude by saying no, but it's yeah. like, we don't know you. What are you doing with this picture? Uh -huh. it's, so it was just, it's, it's weird. But how did you feel like being a celebrity I, for a moment? I felt good. Yeah. But it still kind of felt weird. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm not ready for that level of platform. Or yeah. at least I wasn't at the moment. Just yeah. random people running up to uh -huh. me. Hey, can my son take a picture with you? Can we take a picture? But, so how, how, how often does that happen? When I was in uniform, it happened almost every time we went to a public place. Wow. Even when we went to different bases, if we were just going out to the mall and for some reason we were in uniform or uh -huh. even at the airport, people yeah. want to take pictures. Wow. I like, mean. We could be at the airport 6 o'clock in the morning waiting for a flight and people just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can we take a picture? I'm like, I mean... I guess. <laughs> it, was, man, it was weird. Man, I didn't know that. Uh, listen, was weird. folks in the military are celebrities, but it's good to know to that today. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Definitely celebrity for somebody. <laughs> like, the kids will always be pointing. I'm like, I can understand that. But when you ask to take pictures, it's like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, because I just want to know what you're doing with the pictures. You, you, I mean, you are heroes. Yeah. So that's why the respect, because not everybody wants to go in and join nah, the, the There's a lot of people that say, oh, I can't do it. I'm like, anybody can do it. It just, it's more of, it's more mental than anything. Really? Yeah. So the physical work is, is not that hard? That's going to come and go, because I'm pretty sure we all done seen some people in uniform that was fat. It, oh, and, yeah. and you're like, how, how can you get, <laughs> if you can do it, I know I can do it. So it's more mental than anything. Yeah, for real. So I like, know you seen somebody that's like, you're not passing over no five PT <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not passing. <laughs> so I tell people it's more mental than anything. Oh, really? Because a lot of people have problem with discipline or problem with authority. They don't want nobody yelling at them. Yeah. And that's where the mental part come in. Uh-huh. Because when I was in, and we getting yelled at consistently for no reason, woken up out of sleep at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning for no reason at all. Wow. I wasn't looking at it like, why are you yelling at me? I'm mm -hmm. like, y'all doing your job just like we doing our job. Mm -hmm. I didn't look at it that way as, oh, they yelling at me. I don't like it. And when you wake up, you got to make your bed. Oh, yeah. And oh, make it man. straight. Yeah. So. Yeah. If your bed wasn't up to par, they <laughs> flipped your mattress, <laughs> threw your covers across the room, your sheets, your pillowcase, and you got to fix it all up. Really? And if it's messed up again, they're doing the same exact thing. Wow. And this was every morning. Every morning they checked your bed. So your bed got to be straight. It like... got to be perfect. Not one wrinkle. Not Ooh. one. Oh, wow. If it's one wrinkle or... Anything they flip in your bed. If the hospital corners, which are the corners of your bed, wasn't forty five degree angle, uh -huh. perfect forty five degree <laughs> angle. So they check it. They check it oh, every yeah. morning. Yeah, you got some people that actually pull out the what's the little device that they use to check the angles. I don't know. What, know. Whatever it is, they will pull that out. And if it's not forty five degrees, if it's forty six, forty seven, <laughs> they flip in your mattress. And when they flip it, you, you make the bed and it's thin. It's not good. You're gonna make it until it's perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. And then is there any punishment for not making a bed perfectly? The punishment is very, oh, man. Talk to us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so now they can't even punish, they can't even discipline you no more. So when I was in, they called it smoke sessions. Uh -huh. And smoke sessions, it was never you by yourself. So it was a, it was a thing called battle buddy system. Yeah. Which would be you and two other people. So it could be three males, three females, or two males and a female, or two females and a male. But whatever it is, you got to have two battle buddies. Uh -huh. So if they came in the room, my bed was messed up, I'm not getting smoked by myself. It's two people <laughs> that's in that room is getting smoked with me. So now Whoa. that would point the eyes on me. Uh -huh. And the people look like, oh, you need to get your shit together, blah, blah, blah. You... And the, the punishment could be anything from like the eight count push up, which is. It's kind of hard to explain what I was doing it, but so I do regular push ups. Regular push ups, you know, they do it by NK, which is one, two, three, yeah. one. They make you do that all the way up to like 40, which uh -huh. is two push ups for every NK. So if you're doing what? 40, you're really doing 80 push ups. Dang. And you got to do it on they count so they control the pace. Mm. So you're doing it at their pace. And if you're not moving fast enough or you're not moving slow enough, they'll change the exercise wow. until they get tired. So you, you got to go like faster. If they go counting at a fast pace, you got to move at a fast pace. What? If they counting at a slow pace, you got to move at a slow pace. You got to move on their count. 
Wow. But now they can't do none of that no more. Oh, my God. So that... when I was in, oh, we, we left basic training real tone. Because <laughs> <laughs> our drill sergeant, he was... Uh, he did a lot of calisthenics, uh -huh. so his workouts wasn't normal workouts, and he wanted all of us to be like him. Whoa. So, yeah, <laughs> we wasn't just the average platoon group or nothing like that. We was above average. Old school, old school. Yeah. Yeah. Because he came in old school, so he tried to keep things a little old school. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's not. It's, it's not even close. Wow, that's incredible. And what's the highest, push, highest number of push-up you did in one session? I think I did about 80, 82. 80. Oh, 82. And that was a matter of two minutes. And some people say, oh, 80 push-ups in two minutes, not hard. <laughs> Depending on who grading your push-ups, they're not going to count every push-up. Like, you may think you're doing a push-up right, but if your arm's not yeah. making that 90-degree angle, your yeah. chest straight, your head straight, your back straight, they're not counting it. Yeah, the moment you say 80, I was just like, ah. <laughs> I see some people doing push-ups when they in the gym, and I look like, yeah, none of these push-ups would count if you was in the military. Yeah, they'd be like, nah, that's not but, the right angle. But it's actually, I actually came across some females who can do more push-ups and sit-ups than men. Really? I lied to you not. One girl, she was doing, I think, a hundred and two push-ups in two minutes. Whoa. 102. I didn't even want to compete because I knew I was only doing about 80 to 85. And yeah. that's on a good day. Wow. She was doing about 100 to 105, like on average. So when you saw that, did that change your perspective when it comes to women? Well, my perspective changed on women a long time ago. <laughs> but that was like, okay, when it comes to working out, yeah. as far as body weight, yeah, I don't care what nobody say. They say, oh, she don't got that much weight to push up. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Can you do 100 push-ups? Because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm like, I get credit with credit is due. And she got me beating push-ups. Wow. I don't care. Yeah, that, that's really incredible. So yeah, if someone is someone wants to join the military right now and it's just like, oh, what are some of the things I got to prepare myself before I um, join? Well, I don't know how basic training is now. Yeah. But I would definitely tell them, make sure they're in shape because they're going to run a lot. Uh -huh. I would just tell them to work out in general because uh -huh. they're going to do a lot of working out. So how many miles do you run? That can vary on the day. Some days you probably doing a company run that's like six, seven miles, wow. maybe, maybe ten miles. Damn. Yeah, yeah. And they got A group, B group, and a C group. And the C group is like for the slower people, the heavy set people, yeah. then B group, the average, and then the A group are the people that's in shape and yeah. made for. They knew who I was after my first PT test, so I couldn't go to the B group or the C group. Yeah. I had to stay with the A group, and I had to be in the front. Whoa! So I, I, I had, I didn't have that opportunity. Is it jogging down. or running? Like whatever pace the uh, the drill sergeant is running. Really? So if they running at a fast pace. Everybody. Because when run. we was running, we was running in formation. Yeah. So formation is four people in front, and it's a line of people behind them. Oh. I was I was one of the first two people, oh. so I couldn't let the people behind me pass me, and uh -huh. I couldn't slow down and have a big enough gap. What if they pass you? If they pass me, that's make I'm basically getting in trouble. <laughs> oh, so you gotta they calling you by your last name, Collins. Get back up here. Get back up here. Uh. So, or they tell you strictly, don't let nobody pass you. So if mm -hmm. I'm moving too slow, the people behind me gotta like push my back and make sure I'm staying ahead of them. Because uh -huh. if I fall to the back, now everybody behind me is getting in trouble. Wow. So we tried to come up with a system one day and was like, listen, if I slow down, y'all all slow down too. Yeah. It didn't go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> it did not go as planned. So some people would sell out. <laughs> yeah. Because we was running almost every day. Wow, Because I told you, my platoon sergeant, he didn't want us, he didn't want no other platoons doing better than us when it came yeah. to running, push-ups, or sit-ups. So he made sure we was up to par with everything. You guys compete? We competed against each other Ooh, every morning. really? Every morning. Wow. But for the platoon, it's like a platoon average, and the, the highest score would be 300, and yeah. I think the lowest you can get was maybe one, I think maybe 200, 180 to 200, and our platoon average was, I think, a 276, which is the highest that the battalion has ever had. Mm -hmm. So we actually set a record, but he didn't want none of the other companies' average to be higher than ours or close to ours. So I think wow. the other company's average was like 240-something. We was averaging a 270. Wow. So we actually did good on that. Wow, that's that's incredible. So he man. took working out to a whole nother level. Ooh, man. Just this, that story just made me, oh, man, the military yeah. is impressive. <laughs> oh, it is. It's really you, good. You meet some unique people. I met people from all over. I met people from Turkey, uh, 
Japan, Indonesia. I don't met people from all over. Wow. And it like being in the military, does it teach you a lot about yourself and what you, what your limit is and how you can it exceed that limit? It definitely teach you about your limit. Yeah. But it teach you how to go past your limit as well. Have you have you ever gotten the point of failure? Yes. Really? I, I don't reach muscle failure multiple times. Hmm. Running, push ups, sit ups, bench, multiple times. Can you give us exper- one just one experience? So we was in the gym. After we did our, uh, it's not really like a school, but it's like we did some type of in-class training. Yeah. So me and a couple of friends, we went to the gym after, and the drill sergeant was there. So when he seen us, yeah. he made us work out with him. Oh. And he did something called burnouts, uh-huh. which is when you on a bench, and you start with like a low amount of weight. I think the bench, I mean, the bar by itself is 45 pounds, and yeah. you'll put 10, I mean, four 10-pound plates on each side. Yeah. So that's what, 40, 80... That's about 125. Uh-huh. I'm small, as you can see. Yeah. So that's a lot of weight to me. Uh-huh. So you get on there, you do 10 reps, then you put it on there. They take one 10 off of each side, do another 10, and you keep going until it's just a bar. When yeah. you get to just a bar, you do as many as you can. Whoa. And I've reached muscle failure with that, and we did that We did that same exercise three times. Whoa. So my arms were so dead, I, I couldn't do it. And then after we did that, he wanted all of us to do push-ups with him. <laughs> so like I was hurting so well, you, bad. You did like, the push up? I tried my best to do as many as I could. I don't think I did one. <laughs> like I'm struggling to get on my arms were shaking so bad. Like yeah, it man. looked like I was a worm. Like my body was just squirming. It wow. it was so bad. Like and he was forcing me to go like I was sweating bullets to do one push up. Whoa. I mean, it wasn't just me, all of us, because we're not on his <laughs> level of working out and he thinking that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> That was much afraid to me, like, just wow. walking back to the barracks to shower. Like, my legs were dead. My arms were dead. I couldn't even wash myself. It was just, my arms were so weak. Wow, man. But once he made us do that multiple times, I kind of got used to it. Uh-huh. My arms would still hurt, but I would be able to do at least, like, two, two three, three, four push-ups. So oh, yeah. The more I did it, the stronger my body got from that muscle failure. So mm-hmm. over time, you keep pushing yourself and doing the same thing, you're going to overcome it. Wow. But man. when you first do it, and people are like, no, this is too hard. I'm never doing this again. They just give up. Instead yeah. of, let me try it again. Let me try it again. They just give up once something get hard. Wow, man. That's... So it definitely teach you about your limits and what you can and cannot do. Yeah, man. You're an alpha male. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I try to be. I don't think I've, I've gotten to that level yet. But we'll muscle see. failure is yeah. no joke. I've not gotten to muscle failure yet. I have multiple times. Man. It, it hurts, uh-huh. but you can definitely overcome it if you keep putting your body to it. Wow. That's you just got to push through it. Yeah, that's incredible. So looking back now, what are some of the experiences you, you miss? You're like, oh, man, I miss that experience. Honestly, I miss the traveling. I don't uh. care what state I went to for whatever amount of time. I just miss the traveling. Mm. I went to, like, Kentucky wasn't a bad state. There wasn't a lot to do out there, but <laughs> it's not Maryland. I stayed in Maryland my whole life, so yeah. I was able to experience something different. Yeah. I've been to Kentucky, New Jersey, which is not far. <laughs> I've been, uh, where we go? Uh, Fort McCoy. I think that's Wisconsin. Mm. Been there multiple times. Where else we go? Yeah. I, I forgot. But I've, I've yeah. been to a good amount of places, and it, it was fun. Mm-hmm. One experience I will never forget is called War X. We were sleeping in tents for two weeks. Yeah. No shower, no nothing. What? Yeah. <laughs> we bought all our stuff because it's, it's basically trying to prepare you for being in the field. Yeah. We had no real food. We eating these things called MREs. It's like <laughs> a bag lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, was, it was bad. It was a terrible experience. The generators we had was breaking. The heaters we had were breaking. It was raining, snowing, sleet. Ooh. We had holes in the tents. What were you guys we was sleeping outside in Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Dang. We got sleet, hail, snow, and rain all in the same day. Mm. It was it was bad. Bruh. It was so bad. So when you're going through that experience, what are you thinking? I want to get out. <laughs> like, we was there for two weeks. Every night, I want to get out. Wow. I want to get out. We was getting no sleep. We had people watching the weapons because we got weapons guard. We got night guard. It was bad. So, like, weapon guard and night guard, two people got to be up. 
mm-hmm. all night. Not yeah. the whole night, but they got shifts. So two people up for an hour, whether they got the first shift, the second shift, third, two people got to be up. Mm. So once they shift over, they wake the next two people up. They get up. They got to get their uniform on and stuff. And now they be standing guard, watching the weapons uh-huh. and all this. And then once they shift over, they wake the next two people up. Whoa. So you could be asleep from like 9 to 12, and now you up for an hour. <laughs> and then you got to go back to sleep and then get back up at like 6. And it was... Whoa. Yeah, that's every, that was every night. Damn, bro. That's, every night. That's tough. Every night. That's really <laughs> tough, man. I can imagine myself doing that. Hearing it and actually doing it, oh, two different things. I hear about it now, even though I did. I'm like, I'm glad I don't ever have to do that again. <laughs> so you got to do it once? Oh, no. It's every night. No, no. I mean, like, that experience, like, for the two weeks. The oh, two, two weeks. Week. Do you yeah. got to do it every, just well, one time? So we did War Rex. War Rex, I think, is supposed to happen, like, once every few years or something like that. But yeah. I only experienced that once at my unit. Oh. And that was the worst experience I've ever had. Wow. Out of my whole nine years, that was the worst experience I've ever had. Man, like... When you were finally taking a shower, bro, how are you feeling? <laughs> I felt so disgusted. Because, like, while you out there, they got these things called, like, foxholes, which is you in the ground. Like, you in a hole. Ooh. It could be muddy. You don't know what insects are in. Like, you just in there and you standing guard. Like, you got your weapon propped up on the tripod or something. And you just scan in the area. And you're in there for hours. Dang. And if it's muddy, you're still in there. You may have, like, a poncho on or something like that if it's raining. But you're in there for hours. Bro. So when I finally got that shower, like they told us to bring baby wipes because that was going to be your shower. <laughs> Mm-mm, baby wipes was not cutting it. I took that first shower when I got back home. Whoa. That was the longest shower I think I've ever took. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> now the women, they let the women take showers because women were saying they was on a cycle and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm like, when you out in the field, you're not <laughs> getting that. Yeah. So you need to really train like... Yeah. So women always had their way of not doing what the men dealt with. Oh, so, wow. But the men, oh, it was some odors going on in them tents. Oh. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. How about it? Like the, the, um, the vapor coming out. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> like, it was so bad. Oh, man. And then we had vehicles that didn't want to operate and work, so we couldn't do like... Because we, we knew... We, I've been to Wisconsin so many times, so where we was at, I knew where the stores were. Because yeah. they wanted to go. I think they did one store run for people to get, like, baby wipes. Mm. It was baby wipes and I think, like, hand sanitizer and stuff like that. Even though this was all before COVID, just because we out in the dirt and stuff, we need yeah. hand sanitizer, baby wipes, and a lot of other stuff. So they did one store run, uh-huh. but the vehicles was breaking down. And I was a mechanic in the military, so I was always, me and a few other friends, we were always the ones that had to be in the vehicles just in case something happened. Yeah. And I was a driver, of course, too. So I'm driving everywhere. I'm driving the captain, all the other officers. Yeah. I didn't like it. <laughs> I did not like it. Why didn't you like it? Officers, I mean, I respect the rank. Yeah. But when you let that rank go to your head, uh-huh. I didn't like that. It's just like managers. Once they get like somebody who you knew, and now all of a sudden they get a promotion, and yeah. now they're your supervisor or something, yeah. they let that power go to their head. Uh-huh. That's how it was with officers. Like, I knew you when you was a, a fuzzy. Now mm. all of a sudden you were uh, a butter bar or something like that. Now you want to be this, that, the third. I don't, uh-uh. don't let that power go to your head. <laughs> wow. Because without that rank, you just like me. Yeah, and that's true. That's really true, man. So they let the power go to their head, and I ain't like it. And how, being like after you left the military, and now that you're a veteran, mm-hmm. w- looking back, would you say you learned a lot about yourself? And what were some of the experiences that made you a tough or alpha male? Hmm. I, I did learn a lot. Like my head was on straight before the military, but it just made me see things differently. Because when you meet other people who mindset isn't like yours, but kind of. I'm not going to say better or worse, but it just makes you see things from different perspectives. Yeah. So now I look at things. I don't never look at things from, like, just my point of view. I would try to put myself in your shoes on how I handle this and, like, I see why you felt this way. Yeah. Stuff like that. So I did learn that about myself. Like, first, I was always a one-sided person. Like, if it's not my side, it's it's wrong. Uh Uh-huh. So I did learn that. Mm. Experiences that made me go through that, though. It was more so just basic training. Mm-hmm. Like, all the yelling. Like, I get they had their job to do. Uh-huh. 
and we were just there trying to <laughs> just be us. Cause we, I didn't know what I was getting into. I just yeah. thought we go there, we gonna eat, we gonna work out, yeah, and go to the range. It was deeper than that. Like they really, the purpose was really to break you down, build you back up, mm-hmm. but to how they want you. Mm. Wow, that's 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 some good stuff right there, man. <laughs> I know some people who have no, never been or had any aspiration to be in the military. They were like, wow. That sounds intriguing, interested, but hard. Can I do that? Am I equipped or like physically to do something like that? I feel like everybody can do it. Like I told you before, it's more mental than anything. Yeah. Like the people that's like, oh, I got a problem with authority. I'm like, well, you think about it, everything's authority. Because when you go to work, you got people telling you what to do. Yeah. When you was in school, you had people telling you what to do. Yeah. And when it comes to military... I'm telling you what to do is a problem. <laughs> so I never understood when people said that. Yeah. It just didn't make sense to they're me. They're scared. It's not even the authority. They're scared. They're scared. That's what I feel like. Yeah. If you just scared, just say you scared. Yeah, they're scared, bro. Because when I first did it, I was happy I did it, but I was scared. Yeah. I'm like, this is the first time I'm away from my family for this long. Because yeah. I was gone for like six to eight months. You there, you have no phone, no source of communication besides writing letters. Mm-hmm. And that part, now that I brought that up, that made me feel like how people in jail feel when they write in hundreds of letters and nobody responded back. <laughs> I was writing letters to a lot of people and only like two people was responding back. And I was like, dang. Then I, but when I come home and I do get my phone back, everybody like, oh, I miss you. You've been gone for this long, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I've been writing you. I wrote you. I wrote you. I ain't get no letter. I ain't get no care package. I ain't get nothing. How did that make you feel, though? Honestly, I feel like I ain't had no friends. Like, I, I really felt like I was alone. <laughs> like, outside of my mom, my grandmother, stuff like that, I really felt like I had no friends. So when you came back, did you say, oh, man, are you really my friend, bro? When I came back, I actually did cut ties with a lot of people. Wow. I did, but I did it for the better. Because yeah. once I did that, new people started to enter my life who did more for me than they did uh, the whole time I knew them. Oh, so wow. it kind of... It kind of showed me the real thing. Yes, you re- it revealed yeah, exactly. the real identity. Yeah, and so, that's important. And people talk about something, oh, you got faith. I ain't get faith. I just seen the real y'all. That's, that, that's all that was. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that was. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so glad you, you <laughs> went to the military stuff because that's yeah. some stuff people want to really hear. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'm going to have all these people writing me. This, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not. I thought I had a lot of friends. <laughs> you realize, man, you were just alone. Oh, like reality <laughs> hit me <laughs> when I was in basic training. And the problem is when you when you um when you come back, they'll be calling you. They'll be like, "Oh my dog, man." Yeah, that's exactly what they were saying. Yeah. Oh, we need the link. We need to do this. We need to do that. Yeah. Like, what was this energy yet? When I text you saying, <laughs> "I need soap. I need this. I need this." <laughs> I yeah. was getting nothing. Yeah, but good man. thing I got a strong support system because my family, they made sure I was good. They yeah. sent me all the toothpaste, lotion, yeah. uh, shaving stuff. They sent me all the care package stuff I need. Wow. So that was that was good. Yeah, man. I, I'm so glad, man, that you learned a lot from being in the military. And <laughs> if someone is listening to this episode right now and has an aspiration of joining the U.S. military, what is one thing you're just going to tell that person real quick? I honestly would tell them, do not join the reserves unless you have, like, real personal reasons for why you cannot go active duty. But I would tell everybody, go active duty. Mm. Why? Reservists, okay, one, the recruit is not going to tell you this. As a reservist, you're going to get paid once a month, but you're going to get paid two to three weeks after you go to drill. Mm. So if you go to drill the second and the third of whatever month, don't expect your check until like the 17th, 18th, 19th of that same month. Wow. And it's really not a lot of money, depending <laughs> on your rank. And when you first get in, if you don't have like no college credit or stuff like that, you're going to be between a fuzzy and a PV2. Give us an estimate. Mm. I would say maybe about 200 or less. Whoa. As a reservist, because you're not... People look at the... 
when people are looking at the salaries, they're looking at active duty salaries. Uh-huh. They're not going to show you the reserve salaries. Yeah. If they show you reserve salaries, people yeah. will look and be like, I don't want that. No. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to show you that. Mm. So active is better than reserve. Like I said, active duty, you're doing it every day. You're yeah. going to see your full check. You're going to see your BAH. You're going to see you're going to see everything. Mm. Reserve is you're going to see a few hundred. Yeah. A few hundred. That's it. Wow. So, guys, you you heard that? If you Go have active an, duty, <laughs> if you have an aspiration, active duty. Go active duty. Yeah, man. And pick a job that you actually can use outside of the military. If you don't plan on staying in the military long, mm. like some people get in, and they choose a job based off what they score allows them to do. Yeah. And those are the people who really don't like the military. Mm. I knew from the moment I was talking to a recruiter, I wanted to be a mechanic. Rather, right? it was vehicles. Or airplane or something. I just knew I wanted to be hands on fixing yeah. stuff. Yeah. So when I got the job I wanted, I'm like, I'm good. That was the job I actually wanted. And I yeah. scored high enough to get that job. Mm. Some people just take the test and get a list of jobs and then just pick from that list. Oh. And those are the ones who are like, I hate my job. That's because you went in there with no inspiration to do that job. Oh, yeah, man. I'm glad you just brought that thing up. You know, sometimes people don't really know what your passion or the purpose is yeah and how did you find out that you want to be a, you want to study like mechanic and stuff my whole life i've been like a handyman and hands-on yeah so i knew i was going to be doing something with being active and physical and handy yeah so like i said right there was a vehicle airplane generators or hvac or something i knew i was going to be hands-on and active wow that's that's so good. when i scored high enough in the mechanic portion and I had all the mechanic jobs there. I was like, oh, I'll just be a wheel vehicle mechanic. Mm. But when you're a mechanic, you don't just work on vehicles. You're going to work on everything that has a motor. Really? So I don't work on generators. I don't work on tanks. I don't work on bridge makers. I don't work on <laughs> everything that has a motor. So you got an idea of everything? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's that's good, though. Yeah, it is. You yeah. can take mechanics everywhere. Mm. So I do a lot of work on my own car, my girlfriend's car. Mm. So and now Ben Rollins car. I'm just <laughs> hey, if you, if you need something, let me know. <laughs> I still I still know a lot of mechanics that's saying who got more experience than me. So if it's something I can't do, I reach out to them um, and we'll meet up somewhere and we'll do it. Yeah, that's that's a really good skill to have, like mechanic and stuff, because yeah. when your car breaks down, you just ah, I know what's going it, on. Just, exactly. Just and don't it. gotta worry about taking it to a shop where they're gonna lie about it. Yeah, something. they're gonna lie about it and they'll be like, Oh, is this t-? just to make you feel like exactly. you don't know anything? And then if like, oh, one thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm like and then nah. it takes five minutes to fix something for $1,000. <laughs> yeah, so I used to work at a shop, and a lot of people pay to get their air filters replaced. Yeah. And I don't know how much, I forgot how much they were charging back then, but I don't know how much they charge now either. Air filters take about 30 seconds to replace. Yeah. And they charge you maybe $20, $30 to do, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah, but the thing is, people don't really know. And the, the good news is YouTube is a university. I, I, I tell everybody, when I was working at the shop yeah. and I would be doing the oil changes and filters, I would literally tell, and they didn't like me for that. I would yeah. tell the customers, go to don't you. buy the air filter here. Yeah. Go right next door to the auto zone, buy an air filter. I show them like this box right here. Yeah. Unclip these two, lift it up, air filter go right in there. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, they was going to charge me $40 to do that. Yeah. And they said it would take 15, 20 minutes. It takes 30 seconds, yeah. if that. And it's about, the airfare to be about between 3 and $5. Yeah. Shops should charge you about $20. Yeah. $12, $15, something like Man, I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought it up because some people are watching or listening to this podcast episode. They don't even Shops know about that. scams. <laughs> and, you know, luckily enough, you just brought that thing up. I was, I, ch- I had an oil change today. Really? And when I was doing the oil <laughs> change, this dude, he woke up to me. He was like, oh, this is your, your this is in the air future. It's kind of like wearing out. Like, man, do you want me to replace it? I'm like, dude, no, don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> it's, it's an easy fix. Yeah. You literally just use YouTube. YouTube will tell you about that. Yeah, your cabin man. air filter. They're so easy to fix. Now, a lot of people just lazy and don't want to do it, which is fine by me. But if you want to spend your money yeah, doing that. I mean, spend your money. Exactly. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. You're being overcharged for something that takes under two minutes to do. Yeah. And not even only the air feature. There's some other stuff, like little, little things in your car. that yeah, you It's can... a lot of little things that can be done yeah. in a matter of a couple minutes. Yeah. Like, I feel like most people should do their own oil changes. Uh huh. It's not hard. The equipment isn't. No. Really? Oil change is not hard. <laughs> oil change is not hard. I told Man. my little brother how to do oil change when he was about, I think, eight or nine. Wow. Yeah. Man, like, seeing them going under the car, man. He's not worried about it going under the car. Wow, man. 
I mean, and therefore the people who have like a low car, you could put like some uh, two by four or something, roll your car up one just to give it that extra height, and uh -huh. then you can get under there a little bit more comfortable. Wow. Or if you want to go buy the ramps, you could buy the ramps too. Mm. Man, wow, man, good for you. you got that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably sometime in the future, I'm going to learn some stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah but I, I teach you. Like, I teach a lot of people. I teach, I teach, I taught all my siblings for the most part how to do certain mm -hmm. stuff on their car, or at least look for certain things, like how yeah. to check your fluids, uh -huh. how to check if your tires are going bald, how to look at your brake pads and road to see if they warm, funny or not. I teach them the basics like that just so can't nobody lie to them and tell them this is wrong. Yeah. But wow. everybody in my family called me when anything hey. goes wrong. Wow. And I let them know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that now, man. Go now I'm going to be like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> yeah, just, just let me know. You don't, you don't stay far either. I yeah. Come, I'll be right here. Okay, <laughs> I got man. you. <laughs> I appreciate you for that. And then now I want to transition to something, okay. entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, man. Like, what made you get into entrepreneurship? Honestly, even though I'm still working for another company, yeah, I got tired of working for other people and not <laughs> myself. Yeah, so I'm still working for another company until I can get on my feet enough to the point I don't have to. Uh -huh. And the clothing line takes off to the point where it's just bringing in a steady flow of income. Yeah, but I got into it. I was big. I'm always. I always been big on fashion. Not mm -hmm. really more so the shoes. The shoes portion been my older brother. He, yeah. he he's a fashion fanatic. Yeah. But I just always like being different. Yep. I don't like dressing how other people dress. I mm -hmm. don't like wearing the same thing that everybody got. So, when I got into the clothing line, well, first of all, I came up with the name myself, Wild Wolf Pack. Yeah, that's a really cool name. Though. Yeah, it's, it's different. Wolf, my favorite animal. Yeah. The characteristics of a wolf is kind of represent me as well because it's like very family oriented, uh -huh. strong, loyalty. They teach their young while they young, of course, and that's how it is for me. Like I teach my family members while they were young how to do certain things, stuff like that. So when I came with the name Wild Wolf Pack, it was just more so like a family and friend type of thing. Uh -huh. And I did the logo myself. Wow, it I, looks really cool. I forgot what website it was on when I did it. Because I ain't use, like, these programs because I'm not really too into that. Uh -huh. So I'm just messing around on websites, came up with it. Yeah. And then once I seen this one, it just stuck with me. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. So, and I was, because at first I was hesitant on doing it because yeah. I was actually supposed to start the clothing line with a family member. But I was waiting on them and they was procrastinating. And so kind of, I was talking to my girl. I showed her the logo. She liked it. She was like, no, well, you just need to do it. Start waiting on other people. Blah, blah. Yeah. So I, when I was just laying in bed like, you know what? She right. Yeah. So I just did it. I actually, I paid for the logo. So I got this. I started, I started the uh, LOC for it, got all of that. And then I reached out to a manufacturer through Alibaba. Uh -huh. I did get scammed a couple of times. <laughs> I did, I'm be honest. Because I didn't like have nobody in the clothing industry to who I can reach out to for like advice on how to do this. So I kind of was just doing my own little research and yeah doing everything on my own, so I did get scammed. Talk about a scam for a moment, because someone might be listening to this now so, and they want to try, I mean, to get scammed too. So, me personally, I didn't know how to communicate with the manufacturers or vendors. Yeah. So, through Alibaba, when I was just going through, like, people catalogs and looking at pictures and examples and samples and stuff, I'm like, I like this idea, but I would want to do this differently. I'm reaching out to them. Everything seemed legit to me. Yeah. But again, I don't know what's legit and what's not legit through communicate. Yeah. So I get in a number, they reach out to me through an app called WhatsApp because uh -huh. that's how most manufacturers communicate. So we on there and they're telling me like, send them my design, send them a sample of how I want it, the logo placement and all that. So I'm thinking everything going good. So I'm like, okay, I want a sample, uh -huh. how much is it? One vendor say, okay, sample for this t-shirt would be about $40, $50. So I'm like, okay. Then another vendor says, so I'm like, sample prices are a lot. I'm thinking sample was gonna be maybe $10, 15 20 dollars. So one vendor say sixty dollars. So I sent him sixty dollars. Uh huh. After I sent him sixty dollars, he like, okay, uh, product time gonna take about three to four days to be done, and then about another week, week and a half to ship out to you. So I'm like, okay. And mind you, I did this with about five, six different vendors. Whoa. Getting different samples to see who quality gonna be the best. Yeah. So while I'm communicating with everybody, they all they don't sound alike. But they saying similar things like, what material you want the shirt to be made out of? Where do you want the logo placement? Do you want the logo to be this exact color? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I want this, I want that, I want that. And I'm sending all these different vendors, this amount of money, this amount of money, yeah. this amount of money. And some vendors, once I send them the money, 
all forms of communication stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, damn, like only one vendor from my first batch of samples was in the scan. Wow. But the other four or five were all scams. So Dang. just, I don't remember how much I paid each vendor, but I would just say, I know $60 was the most. So sixty dollars if it was for all five or six, that's about three hundred to three hundred sixty dollars. Wow, man! Now it wasn't nothing major because I know people that got scammed for way more, but the fact that I got scammed in general was yeah. crazy because I didn't think it could happen too. <laughs> but you can get scammed literally doing anything. Yeah, that's that's the world today. Yeah. So then I end up following a couple other people that had clothing lines. You might know a few of them, like uh, Kings Play. Kings Play. I don't yeah. Think so. uh, King. I follow her. Her name's Kayla. So I follow her, and she got, like, a different... No, she has, like, a... What are they called? She has... I forgot, but she has, like, this little thing where you could pay for it, and she'll, like, teach you step-by-step step on how she got to where she's at. Yeah. Like, like it's like a template. Oh. And, like, she'll send you, like, a list of vendors, uh -huh. how to communicate with them so you don't get scammed. So I was... I was I'm not even gonna lie. I was low-key desperate, so I kind of paid for it. And it actually... It was a lot of information. Uh -huh. Like she was literally step by step breaking it down, how to communicate with them. She right actually had a template that I screenshotted. I wrote it down, everything on how to communicate with them. She said, before you even talk about productivity and payments and all that, video call the vendors. Oh yeah, and let them show you around this. And I was like. I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, they can get pictures from anywhere. Yeah, that's true. And be true. like, oh, yeah, this is my factory, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Video call them. <laughs> now, all the vendors I have now, they all in Pakistan. So uh -huh. the time is a little off, but I do video call them. And I have one good one who actually did the sweatsuits for me. Uh -huh. And we still communicate to this day. He video called me randomly just to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. If I need another order, this, that. So growing the bond with your vendor will help things in the long run. Yeah. That's so keep your, when you find a good vendor for whoever do want to decide to make their own clothing line, when you find a good vendor, keep them close. Yeah. Because there's a lot of scammers out here who stealing other people's <laughs> work. Yeah. Because even the ones I met through Instagram, some of them be scams too. So they stealing other people's videos and uh -huh. work. So do live video calls uh -huh. and stuff like that. Wow. Don't just do pictures and let them send you videos. Do actual video, video calls. calls. Yeah. yeah, man, that's 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 a good one right there. Because when you do video call, if you if you it shows you around the factory, yeah. oh, you can tell. Like it. like some people be like, yeah. okay, this is the area where we do the stitching. Yeah. This is the area where we do the cutting. If they can't show you the factory, don't nah, trust them. Yeah. Or if they come up with excuses like, oh, right now it's not a good time. Or this, like, <laughs> don't fall for it. Yeah, that's a scam right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I, I done been scammed <laughs> a few times. <laughs> But well, like I said, I didn't have nobody teaching me. I, li I live and I learn. It yeah. won't happen no more. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, sometimes you just got to go through those experiences yes, and then you become, like, a real human being. Like, oh, man, I've been through that. So I know yeah. how that is. And I'm glad now you're sharing your, your, this and your experiences with people who are listening or watching this podcast episode right now. They'll be like, oh, yeah. I I've definitely got scared. Yeah, they were like, I definitely got scared too. <laughs> I got scared quite a few times. Yeah, man. The good thing it was small stuff. The good thing I didn't do like no bulk orders that were thousands of dollars worth. Oh, man. Then I would have been pissed. <laughs> I, would, I was still pissed even though it was like a few hundred, but yeah. it could have been worse. Let's just say that. Yeah, man. Oh, man. So now, like, having this clothing line, what is your vision or aspiration? Where do you see this clothing line in the next five, 10 years? So when I first started this, well, of course, it was to get other people to wear my brand, but it was more so I just want to be able to say I got my brand across all 50 states. Ooh. So if I can get at least one person in all 50 states in my brand, I would be extremely happy. Of course, the more, the better. Yeah. But so far, I had the brand for about going on two years now, maybe three. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. I think it's two. But I got about 11 states so far. Yeah. That's pretty so, good. So I'm That's pretty good. Doing pretty good. So, like the profit margin, how give us a percentage? Like, how does how is the profit margin? Percentage wise, as of right now, mm, I had to say a percentage. Let's see. Yeah, I don't want to say numbers. Nah, I, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got you. <laughs> um, oh, that's actually good. I didn't think about that. Mm. Because if I said numbers now, people were like, oh, yeah, everybody man, like, oh, I, I got to start ringing this guy's yeah. number. 
<laughs> no, I got you. Um, yeah. Profit margin? 10%, 5%, 2%, 20%. I say between 10 15 percent. All 10 percent. So, so not not nothing major. Yeah, yet. but not that's yet. good though. Yeah. Not yet. That's pretty it's, good. It's good. It's going. It's going to shoot up. Yeah, it's good. I know it is. Yeah, it's good, man. You got a cool product, by the way. Like, it Thank good, you. Appreciate it. Good, it. Yeah, it's Appreciate pretty good. It. I remember when uh, what's his name, Sean was here the other day. Yeah. He was putting that on. He was like, "Yeah, man, you better check my brother out. You got some he, good quality Sean, product." Sean is a great guy. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, I could just tell from. Just I said you, you get great energy when yeah, you communicate yeah, with him. Yeah, he's 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 awesome, dude. Yes, yeah, he is. Awesome, great guy. And he transfers the energy. You can yes, feel it. Exactly. That's yeah. why I said you get nothing but great vibes, great energy communicating with him. Yeah, man. And I really appreciate. I think you too. You got that great energy too. Thank and you. it's Thank hard. You. It's hard to find these days. You know. Yeah. People who are you, real and legit. When you come across them, keep them close. Yeah. Keep them close. Yeah. People always try to like fake it. But I'm glad. You can only fake it but so long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can only fake it but for so long. Yeah. yeah. So now, my man, like, what what are you just thinking that you're going to do in the next 10 years? And where do you see yourself personally? So see myself with the clothing brand or in general? In general. So I do, the clothing brand is still going to be a thing. But I want to start, like, a, a program to help the youth. Like, I told you, I like teaching the youth. So I want to do, like grab a couple of people who have like into plumbing, mechanics, HVAC, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and start like a program where kids who don't want, basically show kids it's another way to be successful outside of sports and yeah. music. So you could be successful doing HVAC, doing your own stuff like that, or doing plumbing. So I wanted to start a program where kids, we have picked kids up from certain neighborhoods, bring them into a building where this area over here would be like, Kind of like a wood shop thing. We could teach people how to buy, like, build, like, outside decks and porches and stuff like yeah. that. Then another side where people doing plumbing, learning how to put PVC pipe on and stuff like that. Then another area where you could have, like, some beat-up cars. We're showing them how to do oil changes yeah. and stuff. I just want to do something like that to show the kids that it's more than just music, sports, and stuff like that to be successful. Man, there. that's a cre- incredible idea, bro. Like, it's incredible. And that's going to help a lot of people get out of some kind of nasty um, situation exactly. that they find themselves in, especially kids who grow up in a single-parent household, especially with their mothers. Yeah, That's going to build them to become better. Those, those are some of the things we, as black folks, got to start yeah. doing for our community. Exactly. And that's going to improve us. So when I yes, hear something like that, I'm just like, yeah, man, that's a really yeah, good we, one. We definitely need something yeah. like that. Yeah. Because like when, you, when you ask kids nowadays, they rather doing music. Sports. It, awesome. Exactly, which yeah. is not wrong with sports. Yeah. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's at not all. for everybody. But that's not exactly. Yeah, not everybody's athletic. Yeah, <laughs> not everybody. You can just force it for too long. And not everybody, of course, can do music. Yeah, we all know somebody who do music. Who, <laughs> You're like, oh my god. Yeah. What so is this guy doing? I just want to show kids that it's more yeah. than just those two ways to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, man, I appreciate you for that, and bro. You've been throwing some really interesting stuff today. People are going to be like, <laughs> oh, you, man, you. this podcast episode is my favorite. <laughs> I learned a lot from my man. He, he got a clothing line. He's a veteran, bro. Like yeah. He got everything put together. I like that, bro. That's, that's the goal. So looking back at your life, right, all your experiences mm-hmm. you've been through, if there was one experience you could take out from all those experiences, what would it be? Like take out like it never happened? Yeah. Mm, that's a good question. Honestly, I wouldn't want to change anything because I feel like everything that happened in my life happened for a reason. Yeah. And it made me who I am today. Yeah. So I feel like the one thing I would want to take out probably would change how my life is now. That's true, And it man. could be for the worse. Yeah. So it's it's not nothing I would change about yeah, my life. Yeah, I like that. That's that's a really good answer, you know? Yeah, People, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, because like all the experiences you've been through mold you to, to become exactly a better version of now. yourself. Yeah, that's really good. And the last question. Last question. If you do, if you were to give an advice to your eighteen year old self, what would it be? My eighteen year old self. Dang. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good. One. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to give advice to my eighteen year old self, I would tell myself. Uh huh. Mm, that's actually a really good question. Yeah. I would honestly tell myself, don't worry about what people think. 
about uh-huh. you because yeah. they're going to judge you whether you're doing something good, bad, anything. Just be out, stay out here and do you. Just wow. do what you want to do because people are going to judge you regardless if it's good or bad. Oh, yeah, guys. So, yeah, guys, you got to just do you. Yeah, people just, are going to judge you regardless. Yeah, like you could be out here doing something positive and somebody might say, oh, you out here, you know, they say working for the white man or yeah, something. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't like what people say. Like, yeah. I want to do something positive with myself, so yeah. now I'm working for the white man. Yeah, man. So people just, just have do some... whatever you want to do. And if they judge you, they wasn't meant to be around you for that situation. So Wow. Thank you very much for that insight. Is there anything you want to say to my audience before we end this episode? Uh, I want to say everybody follow me on Instagram at underscore Wild Wolf Pat. Yeah. And for everybody that do, I appreciate the support. And thanks for tuning into this podcast. Yeah, man. We're going to definitely drop the link on the description below. Make sure you check it out as well. So, my man, thank you very much for coming no to the problem. show today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was a pleasure, man. And I really appreciate you just giving some I'm glad in- interesting to topics, man. And I think we're going to run this again. And I hope your clothing line is going to take go oh, to another I level, bro. I will definitely be here. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you. And hey, guys, thank you for tuning in for today's episode. I'm so glad you always support us. And if you're new to our channel, please make sure you subscribe and like the video. Or make sure you're sharing the video if you're um, the audio if you're listening to sp- on our, um, audios on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other streaming platforms. We really appreciate you for everything you do. Take care and enjoy your day. See you on the next episode. Ben Rollins Blueprint comes to an end. Bye bye. <music>